So now we're going to talk about searching, uh, which is another important thing in computer science. And the idea here is we have an array, and we're looking for a particular value in that array. So the first thing we're going to explore is linear search. So the input to our algorithm is an array A, and the key, which is what we're looking for. And our output is true if this key is found within the array, and it's false if it's not. Okay, so a pretty simple task, and the first type of method we'll use is something called a linear search. So perhaps as the name implies, you're thinking linear, linear time, so perhaps big O of n. And as you can kind of see here, it is big O of n, but let's explore the code and just see what's going on. So there's a couple of solutions to this. So we'll start with the single loop solution, which is probably the easiest. And so our algorithm is called linear search. We input A and our key K. So we do a for loop from zero to the end of the array. And we just check, are we pointing to a value in the array that is equal to our key? If so, return true. And if we go through our entire loop and we don't return true ever, then it's not in there, so we return false. And we can see pretty clearly that this is big O of n because in the worst case, we go through every single item of the array and we don't return true at all until we reach the very n. And at that point, we've touched all n elements, so the runtime is big O of n. Alternatively, you can think that, okay, this ru line runs in n times in the worst case. This if statement is constant time, return statements are constant time. So using the direct sum method, we'll get big O of n. So both of those approaches work. Now there's also a recursive solution for this, which is kind of what we're going to explore now. So linear search again, and it takes an array and uh, a key. So for now, we'll, we'll just say that the initial, uh, we'll just label like the starting and end points of the array as low and high, uh, which are the indices of the array. So this is the starting index, that's the upper index. So note that this is like low won't always be zero and high won't always be like n minus one. These are indices of our original array. So we're sort of taking like a subset of our array, if you will. So what we're doing is first we're checking are our pointers out of whack, meaning is the low higher than the high? If so, we return false, that's not good. Otherwise, we're gonna check is our element in the last position equal to k? So we're just looking at the last position and seeing if that matches our key. If so, that'll be true. Or if that's not the case, then we want to see is the key in anywhere before that last element. So from low to high minus one. So we're going to call that linear search on everything before it with the same key, right? So, that, I mean, it's kind of complicated, the code, but the idea is really simple. We're just checking the last element. Is that key, Is that does that match the key? No? All right, then let's check the elements before it. So then we check the second to last element. Is that equal to the key? No? All right, and then we do it so on and so forth. So it's basically rewriting this linear search in a recursive method, and what it's really doing is the same exact for loop except we start at the end going to the front. Slightly complex. So let's analyze the runtime of this. T of n, so the time it takes for this algorithm to run on an input size of n, is equal to the time it takes on an input size of 1 less plus some constant c. So this t of n minus 1 term comes from here. Because we're calling the method again, so we should still be writing it in terms of t, but now this input size is 1 less, it's n minus 1. This comparison right here takes constant time and everything else here takes constant time. So the work done without this high element, that's constant time. So that's how we get this. And we'll see that this is equal to 
O of n, this is in the example that we just did before, uh, I guess in the previous video, if you're on YouTube. Right, so this is a linear time algorithm, which is great because it's called linear search. So let's th run through an example of what's going on here with an example array. So what we do is we're gonna call linear search, which I'll probably abbreviate as LS eventually, on A going from indices zero to five. So right now we want all of the elements of our array. We're looking at the entire thing. This is index zero, one, two, three, four, five. So zero to five. And then our key is four. So first we check, is low greater than high? It's not, so we don't return false. So that means we check if a of, I, a of high equals k or linear search on the rest. So this will lead us to a of five equal to k or linear search of a of zero to four now, comma four. Okay, so we know that a of five, is that equal to k? Well, let's look, that's equal to one, that's not equal to k. So this will evaluate to false, but this part still may be true. So now we have to evaluate this. So let's do it recursively, ls of a of zero to four comma four. First we check, is low greater than high? It's not, so we go here and we're gonna return Basically the same thing as before, except high is now four. So this will return a of four equals four or linear search on the rest of it, three comma four. So we check, is a of four equal to four? a of four is the sixth term, so this is also false. So now we have to evaluate this and do the same thing again a of zero to three comma four. That will, well, first we check is low greater than high. It's not, so we don't return false. So we return the other thing here or linear search a zero to two comma four. We can check is a of three equal to four. This is a of three. It's not equal to four. So that's a false. And then we do it again, a from zero to two comma four is low greater than high. No, it's not. So we check is a of two is greater or is equal to four or linear search on the rest. So is a of two equal to four? Well, if we look here, it sure is. That is equal to four. So this will evaluate to true which means that this evaluates to true and false, whoops, false or true is equal to true. So that means this evaluates to true. And again, we have false or true, that's true. So this evaluates to true, false or true equals true. So that means overall, our search returns true. We have found that four in our array, which is great. So that is what our recursive linear search method is doing right there. We're just consistently truncating our list slowly and steadily. You know, first we considered these elements and that didn't have the four. So then we shortened it to this. We didn't find the four. Shortened it here, didn't find the four. Here, still didn't find the four. Until we shortened it to this, then we found the four. So that's all that's going on, linear time algorithm. Pretty cool.